Hi humans, Walter Jackson here from the 5 Jackson's Journey. We are camping in Texas this week and because there's so much good meat around, I thought I'll do a video about how I make biltong. I've put a few links in the description. If you want to make your own biltong box, then you can just follow those links. And I've also put a few recipes on there. So uh, let's get cracking. Good afternoon humans, Walter Jackson here from the 5 Jackson's Journey. Uh, today I thought I'll be doing something special for you guys. I wanted to show you how we make uh, traditional South African biltong in the RV. I've got all my stuff ready here and um, I'm going to make some lovely picanha cuts of meat. Cut that up and then I'm going to put it into this uh, kind of just disposable dish. We don't have a lot of space in the RV to keep stuff. So I use these disposable ones and I'm going to uh, cut the meat, lay it in there in uh, some booster sauce and some red wine vinegar for a few hours and then I'm going to hang it up uh, in my custom made, homemade um, biltong box that I made and uh, I'll show you all the steps but I usually always start uh, by sharpening my knife. I've got a really nice uh, uh, filleting knife that I bought and then I usually just uh, sharpen it before I start going uh, because it's very important to make clean cuts through the meat uh, when you do cut it. Okay, so I've made the uh, biltong with quite a few uh, different pieces of meat uh, that I bought in the USA. I've done top round or bottom round, or we in South Africa call the top round sirloin. But the reason I like this uh, beautiful piece of picanha is because um, there isn't a lot of marbling uh, inside the meat, but it's got a nice fat cap. And for biltong, you want to have that nice sort of rim of fat. Um, you don't have to eat it all, but I certainly um, want to make it that way because uh, when it dries, it keeps the uh, biltong nice and moist. And then uh, when, when I cut it into the strips, it kind of end, ends up looking like this one, the first one that I made. and. These little two pieces are, I deem, too small to make, but these are fantastic on the fry, on the barbecue afterwards. So these are the ones, the first one that I cut, this is my first layer, and uh, I'm gonna cut the second one, but in between these two, before I stack it, I put a little uh, layer of um, brown sugar. So, I mean, I just, like that much, and you just, Put a little bit of brown sugar. Now, if you're a health conscience, conscious, conscious, uh, this might not be for you, but uh, then probably biltong isn't for you at all. So just a little sprinkling of brown sugar, and that's my first layer done. And now I'm gonna cut the second layer. Okay, so how I normally cut it, um, you wanna cut it with the grain, but I, we're also limited by the height of our building biltong box. So I really have no choice, but I've got to cut them quite short instead of making long pieces of biltong like this. So I typically just have the thickness like that. And I only cut through the fat initially, and then the knife is sharp enough just to run through and you've got a lovely piece like that. Right, and then you just keep going, doing that over again. I cut through the fat, and then the knife just glides through and you've got your piece of built on, or soon to be built on. Just like that through the fat, and then the knife just glides through the meat. And then you just keep going until you're done. And that's my second layer. Okay, so I've stacked uh, my two layers of cut picanha meat on top of each other and a fine little dusting of brown sugar again on top. And now I wanna add some red wine vinegar. I use two parts red wine vinegar, one part of Worcestershire sauce, uh, but just because I love the taste that it brings into the meat. So you just generously, generously douse this all over. Let it soak on to both layers. 
and you can measure it, but I've done it so many times, I'm just going to do it by eye. About a third of Worcestershire sauce and two thirds of red wine vinegar. And just so it's lightly covered, and then uh, I'm going to put the lid on and I'm going to let it stand for about three to four hours. I don't like when it stands overnight, then it, uh, I find that the Worcestershire sauce becomes too overpowering um, and the vinegar soaks in too much. I just like that it's been coated in there for three to four hours. Then I um, will take it out, I'll throw away the brining liquid as you, as you might call it. And then I will start to put the spices on when I have uh, tapped them all dry. Okay, so a lot has happened in the last four hours. Um, the meat has been curing or sitting in that vinegar and I want to show you the coloration so it's starting to brown a bit and that's what I said earlier I don't want to leave it overnight because the whole thing turns brown the um, Worcestershire sauce soaks it in, into it too much and it becomes too brown so um, what I'm gonna do now is take it out and then I uh, typically put it onto uh, my cutting balls and then I use a lot of this. Kitchen roll. So I lay the kitchen roll on here and then I'll start to take them out. And just with my hands, I try and get most of the liquid off and I start stacking it like this. So I've tried to make uh, some of my own uh, built on spice and seasoning a few times and you know it's different preferences but I like this one the best. This is uh, from Crown National, it's like a safari built on seasoning mix and whatever you, technique you use, however you get it on here, it's just basically a process of getting it onto the meat. So I like to sprinkle uh, loads of it in there and then it's just getting the meat in there. And then I bought these hooks. I bought these hooks on Amazon. And it's a fairly simple process from there. So this is the built-on box I made. It was just, uh, it started life as a container from Walmart. And then I just cut a hole in here, drilled four, tiny little holes with a drill and I attached a PC fan and then on the PC fan is a back connection here that kind of um, it's a little surf that sits on the back that collects bacteria and stops uh, any insects from coming through and then on the other end I made four holes again if you come around with a video it's just a little uh, stick on mesh that stops any insects from coming through okay so this thing I can I can, I, I've, I've made it so that I can pick it up, but all the built on, I don't, the air flows from only from one direction. So I like to, I don't know if it's uh, making any difference, but I like to every morning come pick it up, all the built on, and I turn it around and I put it back down just so the air flows from, from the opposite side. So what I do now um, is I put the built on into this, spice it. And I put the hook on and then I hang it. That's why I put uh, some kitchen roll in the bottom. It just helps with all the spices falling down and some of the juices that it just, it's easier to clean up. So now got the belt on in there. I take off some of the spice and then I just hook it on. It's quite simple like that. Spices right, Yella. Okay, so now all the bolt on is hanging. Um, what I typically do is uh, put the lid on and I plug it in, 
and I like to do it at night uh, because then by the next morning already you can see some movement there's some uh, definite uh, discoloration changing it browner and um, I, I like to leave the built-in for about three days on this system because it's kind of sealed the PC fan works quite well there's no heat in here I don't want any heat uh, because I don't want to smoke it there's got to be just air to dry and air cured so within about three days by the start of the fourth morning uh, it's all ready to eat uh, my wife starts to eat it on day two so um, if you like it wetter and uh, kind of medium rare or more rare you can start eating it on day two but i like to keep it three days so i'll keep showing you every morning what it looks like as we go on and then um, when it's done i'll show you what it looks like so let's get the lid on and let's get it plugged in Okay, so this is 24 hours after I put it in. And like I said, my wife likes it pretty medium rare or rare. Uh, so I've made a cut in. It doesn't look too bad, it doesn't look too wet. This is quite a thin piece. It's lost about, uh, I'd say 40% uh, of its weight. And I wanted to show you how it looks when you cut it. This is ready to eat for her so even after 24 hours this thing works pretty quick this uh, uh, built-on box with the um, PC fan and you can see what it looks like it's uh, still quite soft I don't typically eat it like this I want to leave it at least another day but these uh, these are fine you can eat it like this Okay, so I just took this piece out. You can see this is uh, part of the meat where the fat cap was thickest. Um, but I'm going to trim that. But this feels uh, quite firm to the taste, but not too hard. So it didn't leave the indentation that it did last night. So it's coming back quite nicely uh, to the touch. So what I typically do is I just uh, get rid of some of the excess um, spice. I don't want to underspice it. It's easier to take a little bit off at the end. And uh, this is ready to cut. So what I typically do is I just want to take uh, some of that fat off. I mean, most people, and when I was younger, I used to eat it like that. But uh, I can't do that now. I, I keep hearing my doctor's voice saying uh, your cholesterol and whatever. <laughs> so I trim some of the fat off. I just leave a little bit on there because otherwise it doesn't taste as nice. But that's what it looks like after I trim some of the fat. And then you can see the ends are always properly dry. But it, it dices through quite nicely. I like to cut it with that sharp knife of mine. Um, it cuts pretty easily. And then you can see a few cuts in. It's, it's never as red as you would get like with commercial uh, Biltum because I've put uh, uh, a third of the Worcestershire sauce in it. So it's a bit darker. But this is still quite um, uh, medium rare. And you can see the uh, knife just glides through it. When it gets too dry, it's more difficult to cut. So this is quite soft to the touch, but it cuts really easily. And after 48 hours, this is definitely ready to eat, even for me who likes it a bit uh, drier. So you can see there, it's beautiful on the inside. Not too much marbling. A little bit of fat cap on there just for the taste and it's perfect so I'm gonna cut all of these pieces now like this and then I would put it in little bags and then we'd actually freeze some of it so that we don't eat it up all in one day and that is how I uh, make biltong it's bloody delicious That's good. That tastes like more. More. Now I'm going to have to share with everybody. 
the worst part. But no, that's all I make builds on. You're the super